Okay, so let's look at number 10 first. Which of the following formats should be used for the domain of the function uh, f of x equal x minus 4, x squared minus 3, x minus 4 on the bottom? Okay, so for this rational function, what we don't want is 0 in the denominator. So our process in finding the domain is to set the denominator to 0 and solve. And whatever we get, we do not want those numbers in the domain. So we're excluding things, which means our, our answer for the domain is going to be of the form that x is not equal to whatever we get. So you're going to choose this one right here. Um, let me see if this lets me write on the screen, because we're going to go ahead and find the answer to part two. So we'll mark that right there. Now, let's find the answer for part two. We're going to set the denominator to 0, and we want to solve that equation. Then we will exclude those two answers. All right, so that factors nicely. Let's notice factors of negative 4 that add to a minus 3 will be a minus 4 and a positive 1. So that's going to give us x minus 4 and x plus 1. And if we set those two factors to zero, we're going to get a positive four and a negative one. Now, let's remember, even though we were solving, we're actually going to exclude these two answers. So this is going to go in the blank, x is not equal to, and we'll have four comma negative one right there. All right, now your second one, let me see. I think I'll have to go out of this and then maybe it'll let me go to your second one here. Okay, now this one is a little bit uglier. So what we've got to remember from earlier algebra courses is that lines have equations that look like y equals mx plus b, where m is the slope, and b is the y-intercept. Now, on this equation right here, uh, we can kind of uh, see where the y-intercept is going to be. If this thing were extended, we could tell that it's 5. It's a whole lot harder to tell on this one right here. So we'll, we'll use a, a little bit different process there. Still using this, but, um, but we can actually kind of... Um, and we might actually need to use it here, because I thought it was a nice slope of negative two but it looks like it's not quite so instead all right so here's what we're going to do um here on this one which is between negative six and negative three if we look at the x values that goes between negative six and negative three we're going to end up putting that part of the equation there but we've got to come up with this equation so one of the things i can do notice this point is exactly on the grid right there so i can count this is 1, 2 up, and 1 over. So 2 up, 1 over gives us a slope or m value of 2. All right, so I know that m is 2. Now, I don't know quite what b is because this goes up here and it hits the y-axis somewhere up there. So what we're going to do is we're going to use one of our points. We're going to plug them in for x and y, and we'll figure out what b is. So um, I'll just use this point right here. This point is negative 3, positive 5. So I'll just write that negative 3, positive 5. So that's x value negative 3, y value 5. So let's put a 5 for y and a negative 3 for x. And that's going to give us a negative 6 plus b. And then we'll continue solving. We'll get that b is 11. Okay, now we have to plug that back in right here. 
So y is 2x plus 11. So that is the formula for this piece. 2x plus 11 is what's going to go here. Remember f of x is really the same thing as y, so we're really not losing our y. And we're going to do exactly the same process that we just did for the 1 to 6 part, which is this piece of line right here. So for this piece of line, let's see if we can figure out. I can see that it goes through this point, And it would have gone through that point right there. So um, let's, uh, let's do a count. Now let's notice this time I'm counting down. So 1, 2, 3 four, five down, and one, two over. So that's a slope of negative five over two. So I'm going to go put m in as negative five over two. Now, it, you might find it easier to make m into a decimal, to make negative five halves into a decimal, and then to solve this process. So as a decimal, negative 5 halves is negative 0.5x. Negative, I'm sorry, negative 2.5x. That's a little easier to deal with. All right, now let's choose one of the points, and we will plug that in for x and y. I'm just going to choose this one right here, which is 3, negative 2. Um, 3, negative 2. So let's plug 3 in for y, I'm sorry, negative 2 in for y, and 3 in for x. And let's work this out for b. All right, so negative 2.5 times 3 um, and that gives us negative 7.5 plus b, and then of course let's just add that, having trouble making points with this little thing. And we get that b is 5.5. Now, just like with the last one, we want to put the b back in right up here. And I'm just going to do it right here. We'll have negative 5 halves x, or if we want to call it negative 2.5x, uh, plus 5.5 for b. And hopefully that will help you with those two problems.